Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to a new Food for Rhino webinar. Uh, today we have the pleasure to have with us Peter Donders, but my colleague, uh, new colleague Agustina Jaime, also from the McNeil Barcelona office, she organized this, this webinar and contacted Peter, so she will kindly introduce him. Hi, everyone. Um, in this webinar, we have the pleasure uh, to have with us Peter Donders and he will be showing us his work through the years and his future projects. He's a Belgian designer, master in 3D technology and printing, and he worked for 15 years as a craft furniture designer and maker before beginning to integrate computer-based tools into his work. And immediately after his graduation in 1987, he became self-employed as a carpenter and experimented from early on with special shapes and materials. And in 1999, he switched from pure craftsmanship to drawing on the computer in 3D and CAD, which he developed in self-study. And now he combines his background as a craftsman with his expansive technological knowledge. And the computer is now fully part of his production process as, he, as we will see. And feel free to use the chat and we will collect any questions for the final part of the webinar so Peter can answer them at the end. So welcome, Peter, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Yes, please use the chat. And remember, this, this webinar is being recorded. So if you miss one part, you will be able to watch it later. Yeah. Thanks, Agustin and Peter. Uh, thank you uh, for having me uh, today. Uh, it's always nice uh, to get back to the the Rhino group, uh, but uh, now we're going to start with my yeah. life, the past. So I was born in 1965 in Belgium, uh, started my own business in 1987. And in 1999, I uh, started working in the Rhino 2. It was a very expensive experimental uh, approach because there were no uh, no YouTube, no nothing. So it was all self-study. And in 2001, I had the possibility to build a theater in Amsterdam for a musical. And I could learn Rhino while I was working, uh, while I was earning. So that was uh, a big advantage. Uh, and then we move on to 2005. I was in uh, London with uh, Paracloud uh, and T-Spline showing off uh, some, some kind of pre-grasshopper stuff in, in Paracloud. was a build based on components uh, multiplying on, 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 a, on top of a surface, some kind of pufferfish. We, we, we would do it now in pufferfish very easily. And in 2008, I went back uh, with these plans for the presentation of uh, the Blackpool renovation, uh, the theater in Blackpool. I used uh, these plans as one of the first uh, in an uh, industrial uh, uh, manufacturing process. Then in 2010, I designed the C bench with uh, filament winding. Uh, carbon fiber. I came up with a company who did uh, vessels, pressure vessels, and I designed it, uh, the shape for the bench. And it was, yeah, they, they loved it, but it was not possible to uh, achieve that. But uh, as stubborn as I am, I, I wouldn't let go. And uh, they, I asked them what they need. So they needed uh, the geodesic pads around the shape. For a sphere, the geodesic pad is always the diameter of the sphere. So if you have a Christmas ball, whatever, and it's you got a rope, you make the rope wet, you wind it around the sphere, it always stays on the diameter. If it goes smaller, it will slip. And if it goes bigger, it will also slip. So that uh, knowing that, I was, was uh, did some research. And there was a function of geodesic pads in Grasshopper. So I tried out uh, to uh, make a design on, on the shape, but it wouldn't work because the continuity was off. 
mentioned the first one was a little bit the second one a little bit plus a little bit and and so on so i managed to adjust the continu continuity of of the curve on the surface so we made the C bench prototype, a very small one, uh, one meter. And then we made a big one, and uh, immediately it was picked up on the internet. So uh, the bench went to Nike in Portland for a design uh, gathering for it. It was all internal. So I never could make publicity with, with these things. But uh, there were 10 items picked uh, worldwide in 2010. and uh, my my bench was next to the space suit of NASA, and then uh, Bob McNeil uh, sent me an email to put it in the Fabricate uh, 2011 book. So I sent it in, and it it's in the book. So uh, thank you, Bob. Then uh, in 2011, uh, everything is fine when you do a bench like that, and it goes around the world. But you have to do something. People are expecting things, so. I didn't know what to do, so I started designing a chair in, in, in T-splines, and it was the butter idea. I, I will show them later on. In 2012, also T-splines was uh, the design, the first design of, of the, the Shelly. In 2012, I did some rough uh, play around with, with the Rietveld chair. Uh, 2015, I did the parametric lace. I will give a demo for that later on. In 2019, I did uh, the wind. We I was showed it all this, and uh, at the end of 2019, a friend of mine came to ask me if I would help him do some projects in the United States. So we did uh, Las Vegas, the Raiders Stadium, Indianapolis Stadium, and the Seattle, the, the latest uh, new stadium. So we. we took three years to build all these uh, constructions. So this is now uh, at, as we speak. And uh, this is about the future. I just put a num number on it. Uh, I guess we have Rhino 15 then and uh, Grasshopper 5 with some NFTs and some metaverse uh, things. So that's the, the intro. Now I move on to the other things. Uh, let's see. So, first of all, Blackpool, the best seats in the house. Uh, I used uh, T splines for refurnishing the whole theater with 1400 seats. So, the metal part was designed, or actually, the whole chair was designed in Rhino, but the metal part, I now have to design uh, molds for casting. Aluminum, and this this was the tricky part to do this in Rhino. So I needed uh, these splines. So it was a very helpful uh, tool. So we did all the chairs then. Actually, the the setup what I use is I use Rhino, I use Modo, and Rhino is NURBS, Modo is Mesh, and I needed the link in between and uh these splines came in real handy because it's a mesh model inside of rhino so that's uh that's the three things i use for the most of the time then 2011 uh, it was the shelly was designed uh first it was a 3d model then uh, I was wondering how, how it would be possible to make this thing. So I cut it up in pieces, let it print uh, in plastic and cast in bronze, polished it, blah, blah, blah. A lot of work. So this one is uh, black patina. It's 70, now it's uh, 37 kilos of bronze. So it's very heavy, but it's a very nice piece. Then in 2013, I started more scene. That's a kind of uh, uh, would be a spin-off for jewelry. So I also did a lot of jewelry in, in Rhino, uh, some parametric, some not. This is done with, with the uh, Weaver Bird. This is done also with these splines, these two. This one, I will show a little movie how, how it's done. It's uh, 
very, very simple. Actually, everything is simple if you know what you do. So I'm moving quite fast because we are limited in time and uh, I would like to answer your questions at the end. So I call this tubes. So this is uh, just funny things. Okay. Then um, went. I move on to 2019. There are a lot of things in between, but uh, I will show only the, the major things. This is the little 3D print. In the background, that's the stack of uh, cut uh, CNC melt pieces. So this is the setup in my workspace. Uh, these are all connecting points, all numbered. So at the end, if it's glued together, I can remove them. You see how this goes up. Oh, the shape is inside, so I have to take away the, the edges. Then you get, at the end, you get this as a result. It was, uh, I think, three months sanding, about 500 hours of sanding. Preparation took uh, also a few weeks. Because I'm a lot of uh, into 3D printing and uh, I did uh, the battery there, I was cast in a 3D printed sand mold with the uh, voxel jet in Germany. And then uh, we came up with uh, the sand impregnated with uh, resin could be used as a shape because normally you print the molds, they are wasted, but now you can use the sand as a shape. So it's very detailed, it's very nice. Uh, and the printers are four meters by one meter by two meters, so it's quite big. You can print a piece of a wall, so you see the details. Very, it's sand with with uh, glue together actually. Then we got oh, we got Vegas, uh, totally different, but uh, also nice. In Vegas, uh, they needed. Uh, one side of the stadium has to go open to, so that the uh, field goes out on, on, on rails, big rails. So they need uh, the scaffolding to get out in a certain time to rebuild the stadium for concerts or for uh, football. So I designed uh, these parts of, uh, of the scaffolding uh, and they will go up and down and they can roll out. So this is uh, one piece going out. And this is the field and this is the stadium. So we got about 5,000 seats removable uh, from the stadium in, in just eight hours. They can take out the uh, the grass field and they can put everything back. So that's a quite uh, interesting. It was a challenge to do it in this time. So this is the stadium, this is the field, it, it, it slides in. Uh, this is for the weight also in, in Grasshopper, calculating the weight of the elements. This is the, I think it's this side that goes out. I don't know, uh, or this side. Uh, I've never been there. So <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the grasshopper setup for uh, designing these pieces, uh, all the layers uh, from left to right, uh, the extra on the side uh, elements, the platforms, everything is in, in grasshopper. So it took a while to set this up. But uh, anyway, if you got one uh, set up, you can change the dimensions and everything will We'll move along. So that was uh, Vegas. Then we got vines. Uh, it's a fancy chair. 
also uh, I think T splines and uh, it, I used to do it in T splines, but now it's uh, all sub D. And uh, so I make uh, 2D drawings with, with dimensions and uh, then I make the chair out of uh, pieces of wood. So it's also a few weeks sanding, gluing, whatever. Uh, But it's fun to do uh, working on the computer and then working in the studio. So this is the Shelly, but then in Walnut. Also, uh, actually I do all, all the stuff in Rhino and the doc was in the studio. So he would like to go on the picture. So it was no problem for me. So, and then this is one of the last things I made. Uh, this is uh, four chambers of the heart, I call it. It's uh, what's in the name. But it's also uh, done in, in plywood, six mil. Also all numbered pieces, all glued together. It took me uh, quite a while. It's only one centimeter thick or everywhere. So I have to adjust the, the strength underneath this. And this is the render. So this is this is the real thing. This is the render. I go quite fast because uh, of the time. So now I would like to go. Uh, like I did the past for these. Yes, I go to this one. I will go to the museum. In time of uh, Corona, you have to be, uh, yeah, inventive. I, I don't call it that way, but uh, you have to do something. So I designed my own museum because I got all these 3D files and uh, sharing this uh, would be nice. So I did uh, build myself a museum in 3D. Uh, this is in Sketchfab. So you can walk around. This is the museum for the unified city from UPG Social. That's a futuristic project. Uh, I will come to that on the end. Uh, this is all buildings designed, uh, whatever houses, uh, there's a boat. There are uh, and also a house, buildings, and this is a nice, I call this the seven foot dancer because it has seven feet, obviously. Uh, this is the, the Batu Idea. Oops. This is the boat. Uh, this would be 100, no, 200 square meter living uh, space underneath the water surface. So if there's a, somebody who's interested, just give me a call. This is the shape. I will show this. Uh, this is, uh, I call it uh, less is more. And then you will see how, what I mean when, when you see how it's done. Uh, this is uh, Voro 5, I call this, it's five pieces of Voronoi connected with uh, And then this is the wind bench. So that was the museum. Uh, I think there's a place where the links are. Uh, People can show, get that, get that. Uh, oh, this is the, this is the lace. Yeah, I just paste the, the link of the museum on the chat. Okay, thank you. It's really amazing. I guess you just you imported all the, the uh, geometry from Rhino into SketchUp, right? Yes, I did a, a setup in Rhino. I made an FBX and then I put it in. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's actually it's it's almost. Uh, oh. 
ready for, for Sketchfab, a little tweaking with the lights and, and, and settings. And then it's, it's, it's there. It's, you can, you can move around, you can yeah. put on the Googles and then go in VR even. Very nice. So it's, yeah, it's, it's very nice. Uh, set up uh, okay that was that i go back to the other computer blah 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 actually i, I got my setup for this is uh, my laptop I'm, I'm on my laptop now it's an old alienware it's a four core i7 it's seven years old i guess there's no graphics card inside so i'm designing stuff with with uh, very limited uh, computing power but if it's running on the laptop, it will run everywhere. So, and this, what you see here, this is a, on my uh, working workstation. It's a 32 cores uh, Ryzen, uh, 40, uh, 64 threads, uh, 64 gigs of RAM and uh, 3080 uh, graphics card. So that's totally different. I love the, ex the extreme parts of, of technology. So what can you do with a laptop from seven years and what can you do with a very fast machine? So um, I'm going to start with the demo now. Uh, let me see what I got here. I got the lace. Uh, I will show first the result. So this is the lace chair, and actually, it's a it's a two D texturing setup, but in three D. Um, every layer of of texture, every pixel, it's a seamless texture uh, simulation in three D. That that's actually that's what it is. So. Um, I got the file here. I will get the oops. Something went wrong, but it's no problem. Okay. No, oh, that's not the right one, sorry. Where is my file? Sorry for that. This is not good, not good, not good. So I have to find out where it is. OK, that's it. So I told you it's about a 2D uh, painting texture seamlessly. So this is actually this is the setup of all the things. This is done also, I used to use it uh, in T-splines, but now uh, it's all converted to uh, sub-D. So this is the sub-D version. This is the mesh version. So what I do is, is these two points are in exactly the same spot as the two points. Uh, so you can do uh, this position is exactly this position you see this is very this is connecting so all these parts are connecting on both sides and i put it in uh, my, my definition to put it on a surface like this so this is the first part and then I can add uh, things. So they go on top of each other, underneath each other, cross cross, whatever the design is. 
and then you can uh, choose your pattern, what you like, with all the single meshes. And then we got this so far. We got a one by one. So there's one square over the surface. So this is the this is the square what I what I'm talking about. Um, so this this is one unit. All these meshes are one unit. Then uh, add some more. Always nice. Okay. Now I got them all active. You see, and now I see this is not going all the way. This has to do with uh, with the range. So you see, now it's fully covered in one square is over the seat. Now I can multiply it. So you can see where I go. So this is how it's done uh, for this kind of. Uh, I did a, I did a video that it's somewhere on the internet. I did two layers underneath each other with different colors, so I could make it look more complex, whatever, but it was the same. And I guess I, I use this file because I see uh, so this is the first one, this is rotated 90 degrees and it was underneath the blue one, it was in black. So you could do uh, 15 layers of, of black and you could do uh, uh, seven layers on, on of, of blue or whatever. So anyway, uh, this is the and then these are the base mesh. I join them, uh, put them on top of uh, surface, and then project them in a kind of twisted box uh, surface morph uh, on this surface. Then I use a weaver word to give it a thickness, eight millimeters. Then I do a sub D level in the weaver bird. Uh, and then I got the basic uh, geometry. And if I bake it, you will see the end result is is quite dense so now uh, polygon count uh, 4 million uh, 90,000 polygons I'm going to delete that because it's not good for my machine but uh, anyway uh, if you see I got uh, uh, let me see how many polygons I started with. So I started with 1,107 polygons for the square, and I end up with 4 million N. So it's uh, quite an, uh, 
adjustment that that most of the time i do work like this uh, very low basics very high end uh, output uh, all done by the machine because if i manipulate the thousand polygons it's easier than manipulate four million polygons at once okay i will move on to the next uh, demo it's it's similar but it's different it's always the same but uh, always different so i made a sub d thing and i use the same definition and i put it in uh, on, a, on a surface and then you get this this kind of structures you can you can use quite big there I see okay so you see you can multiply uh, layouts of uh, uh, this is going inside. I need to go outside. Yeah. Okay. So you can multiply these these things uh, over uh, whatever kind of surface you need. Five, five. And then I can change the base of, I got the surface like this. Uh, I can put as a result. Uh, you can see it, 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 it will follow the, the curve. So we can do facades, we can do whatever we like with, with, with just the input is making the difference. Also uh, one trick, uh, if the base, there's a bounding box always generated from the basic mesh. Um, most of the time, I use the bounding box of the component, but sometimes I use a, a smaller one so it can overlap. So that's one thing, uh, just put in the reference as a bounding box separate from the, the mesh you get. This is the same one, but I can use another one. I can use this one. If I make it smaller, it will move uh, different over the surface. Okay. Now I'm gonna see what we can do now. Less is more. That's almost nothing, but uh, so this is an example from from very low input, and then with with grasshopper get a very nice result. So I will preview this. These are two triangle mesh, just two triangles. So this six points will send, this is mesh one and mesh two. And this is a mesh plus a plugin. You can add you can change the shape, you can close it, open it, whatever. Plus you can uh, do fancy stuff with uh, moving the triangle points around. It always updates very nicely. So you can play around till you got the, the shape you would like or the shape you prefer, whatever. So this is, this is one setup. 
I can do another one. We got a different output. And we got a third one. It's also another input, other input block, and that's another output. So you can only six points and you can do very funny structures. So that's the, that's the great, that's the power of, of grasshopper. And uh, so that's the funny part of uh, designing stuff. Uh, I will open another one. Uh, the Pieta, yes, the Pieta is nice. It's got nothing with Grasshopper, it's just uh, to show the, the, the power of uh, Quattri Mesh. In the uh, meantime, just one, one, because this is a very interesting question by Luis Pina Lopez. Yeah. Uh, he asks if you have ever tried coding, for example, with Python. No, I'm not a coder. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a this one I'm, programmer. I'm, I, I work with with a hammer, and a, <laughs> I'm not a coder. <laughs> but but uh, it, it would be nice to know it. But I'm I'm a little bit too old yeah. to get into coding now. I guess. Uh, well, actually, this is coding, but visual, but yeah, I know, uh, I know. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. This is this is for me. Grasshopper is coding. Yeah, it is. So actually, it's it. We don't need. If you got this, we we can. For me, it's enough. So. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, nice to meet you, uh, Luis. It was Luis. Yes. Yeah, Luis Pina Lopez. And well, uh, there the are name, many the people. The name says me something. I, I, yeah. I, I, well, if you watch later the the, the chat, uh, there are many people. Uh, that seem to know you, uh, telling you hello, how inspiring, etc. I will, we will tell you later. Okay, nice. <laughs> so uh, the um, Rhino Seven came up with uh, Quattri Mesh tool, and it, I was amazed uh, with the power of it because this is uh, this is an STL file. I just downloaded it from. Uh, Rome. So it's a 792,000 polygons, triangles. If you put it in quad mesh, you can, uh, with one click, you can make, you can reduce it to uh, 16,000 polygons. You can make it a sub D, like one click, and you can make it a NURBS in one click. So this is this is a tool that this is uh, years ago. This would cost uh, time, a lot of time to do this, plus a lot of money on software. And now it's just click and it's there. It's it's amazing. Also, I try to uh, not forget all the things. Uh, it comes in handy if you just remember that it, that it exists because it's a new feature. You not always used to use uh, immediately the new features, but uh, I'm designing a lot of things for for stadiums and and, and uh, seats and, and and movable parts. And uh, anyway, sometimes I need it uh, into Modo. I need a mesh. I need a very nice mesh. Uh, so I do quadri mesh pop up, and uh, it works fine. So actually, I got Rhino. I had Modo, and I had T splines in the middle. T splines was taken away by some big uh, company. I won't say the name. And actually, sub D comes along. It replaces uh, the T spline. So the history moves on from T splines into uh, sub D. So it, it, it's great to have these tools. Uh, so it's 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 wonderful to to be able to use this this. Uh, very, very nice job. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, I have, oh uh, yeah, I have some videos. We can't say, we cannot open these here. I have to go there. Uh, I should. Uh, 
We'll show the video of the frog first. Oh, that's not working. Nope. I got the same problem last week. So this is a video I did for um, 2015. There was a conference in uh, Brussels for 25 years of uh, 3D printing. And they asked me to show some stuff I did with, with uh, jewelry. So uh, I did a video for the also the dragonfly and this is the, the frog ring. So this is the same as always, uh, low poly start. And we end up with a lot more polygons. So this is the subdivision from uh, Weaver Bird. This is stellate also from Weaver Bird. And then the Ticken from also from Weaver Bird. I'm a Weaver Bird fan actually. So uh, what I did was uh, I, I used to get use uh, Weaver Bird a lot because uh, the T splines would take a lot of RAM uh, from the computer. Also, my laptop was not so fitted with, with uh, using a lot of RAM. So uh, actually, I used the T splines as a base mesh. And I did the rest with uh, Weaver Bird. So this is very smooth. You see, I got all these dimples, uh, very, very smart structural on, on sub D level. You got one piece, you got four pieces, you got 16 pieces. So it's always uh, the same. And then you can, uh, that's T splines, good old T splines. I can move uh, the geometry of the frog so everything will come along. It's always the same. So that's why I'm using uh, 400 polygons as a base model and calculating uh, the, the very complex geometry with, with Grasshopper with the machine. So. And it's one click, uh, save as uh, STL and put it to the printer. So anyway, uh, now, now these days you upload the file, the STL file, and uh, a few days later, there's the guy bringing the ring in gold and platinum and whatever material you like. Uh, a lot of things is, are possible. So I started with the jewelry, but I stopped uh, because there, there's so much uh, jewelry going around. Uh, it's not the word. Uh, you cannot make a living from, from jewelry 3D printed in, in this time. So output, uh, this is the very, it's 1.2 million polygons. This is the 400, you see. And it's a very nice uh, meshed. It's it's almost perfect. Are you selling this mother? No, I, I used to. I I sold a few, but I'm not selling it anymore. I don't make them anymore. So it's archive. It's, but uh, on SketchUp or Shape Shapeways or no, I'm not. Uh, there are too much. Uh, in the shops with shapeways and and I materialize it's it's uh, you cannot see the the trees through the forest because it's uh, it's overloaded with with files and then yeah. uh, I don't have time for for that okay but it's it's uh, I think it, it was a nice approach for materialize and, and shapeways to do a shop but uh, not for me uh, so this is a very simple uh, thing with, with, with cubes. I use the surface, uh, populate uh, random points. Uh, if you place the points by a cube, uh, can rotate the cube. They all intersect. So we can print them together. So this is the rotation of the cubes. And then you can see it's a very small cube, 1.6 millimeters. 
and that's also that in the beginning with jewelry, I made a big mistake. I, I designed on the computer. I didn't know how it would look like in, in real life. Uh, I designed rings with, with holes of uh, one thousandth of a millimeter, so nobody can see it. Uh, nobody can print it anyway, but nobody can see it. So it's, it's a waste of time. So you have to never lose the connection with reality. Um, putting things uh, outside the computer make you realize the size of things because uh, we can zoom in. We, we can actually, uh, the people at, at McNeil are so funny. They uh, put in the, the, the size or, or the units can be uh, light years. Who's thinking about such thing? It's it's great for me. It's great. I'm gonna design something in light years, uh, maybe tomorrow, but uh, not today. So hopefully, in the future, we will have voxels. Voxels, but, yeah, would be hopefully, but don't take it as a promise. I mean, not no, not no, in no, I, I think uh, light years are okay for me uh, uh, at the speed uh, of light. But um, anyway. Uh, it's actually it's 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 what what they say at McNeil. We we can we can put one unit is a light year. I say one unit is for the distance between two points. It's and the name we call it is in, is in between. So we can do with light years. We can do with millimeters. We can do with meters. Whatever we can do with apples. Uh, we got seven apples from point A to point B. That that would be nice for uh, making a difference. But uh, anyway. Um, uh, the, the size in real life, uh, you always keep it in mind uh, that it's, it's, it's possible uh, to make it in real life because a, a, an object in, in light years, nobody's going to print that. It's, it's too big, obviously. So this is the dragonfly. Uh, very simple setup, but it's, it looks very nice. So. Also a lot of uh, polygons, but uh, that that's not a, not not an issue for the printer. Okay, I got some a few things more before I uh, have to stop. I guess uh, oh, we we did this. Uh, oh, before you jump to or skip Brasshopper, uh, there is one question by Joaquin Laborda. Hello, Joaquin. Um, if you can repeat the name of, of that red component you used to create the forms with three tri triangles. Ah, uh, it's from uh, Weaverbird. From Weaverbird, okay. Yeah, sub D. You can find it on the Jack, on Jack, right? Yeah, it's a uh, food for Rhino also, but uh, they link to the page of their of okay, their yeah. own, I guess. Okay, I'm going to post it on the chat. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's uh, Weaverbird. Perfect. Very very nice. Yeah. Uh, Developed by, by our colleague, Giulio Piacentino. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm uh, now uh, still empty because we are now working. So we can fill it in, this in later. And I will go to the future. Uh, I got my own uh, NFT thing set up. Uh, it's, it's a kind of egg with... with mechanical egg it can move it can walk around uh, this is the real thing uh, i don't know if they see the camera if can they see this no they just see my screen okay no 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 camera but no, no problem we see the egg yeah you see the egg on the box, uh, on the box. actually i sent the egg to new york uh, and it was in uh, Fifth Avenue and uh, Central Park, uh, enjoying the sun. Uh, you see the blossoms on the background. So uh, we're going to drop this in July, and it will be dropped in the Unified City. And that's uh, also a uh, future thing. So I got this is in Rhino. It's a, it's a city set up. Uh, this is the center we're working on now. It's a four by four kilometers uh, space. So
So we got the city center. It's a 950 units uh, shopping or whatever business uh, location. It's uh, uh, three layers uh, with 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 uh, connections, and uh, there's a bridge to the outside. Uh, and just walk fast. This is in uh, twin motion. So all these buildings are designed in Rhino. Um, and the trees are in twin motion. I can move on to wait and I will show you the twin motion file. So this is in twin motion. It's a, uh, you see the, the buildings. So actually I designed all this, uh, also grasshopper, rhino, blah, 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 uh, one layer. And then I stacked them together on, to make different sizes of, uh, this is, uh, this is the stacks building uh, from the cryptocurrency. Stacks Foundation. Uh, this is uh, OpenXO. Also into crypto. So this is the future. I got this in twin motion. Oh, there's my boat flying there. Wait a minute. Nice. Zoom in. So uh, I started with Rhino. Uh, we put it into uh, hubs. Hubs is a little bit uh, low poly. So we moved over to Twin Motion. And from Twin Motion, uh, I will put it, I got it in uh, Unreal Engine 5. So uh, this, is, this is futuristic uh, stuff for whatever uh, is coming. I don't know what's coming, but uh, something uh, will happen in the metaverse. So this is the twin motion. I'll go back to the other computer. Whoop. So that's a night. Uh, anyway, we you can do one block uh, position. One block. I got. I got a. The roads are set up in a square with with uh, with a mesh. I put two blocks and I multiply it and flow along curve, blah blah blah. And then in twin motion, I can click on the replace the blocks by the lights. So it, it's it's all compatible. It's very nice uh, these things. Okay. So that's about uh, now. We got six minutes left. I stop sharing now, okay? Very, very cool. Many Thank thanks for, for the amazing presentation. All the people are amazed on the chat. They say it's very inspiring. Uh, uh, Mike, uh, Michael Sean asks if there are any of your files, uh, Rhino or Grasshopper, um, available there to to make some tests with them. I mean, if you, if you share any of your, if there are any of your files that you, you share with the community. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't share the files because it's, it's, I'm, I'm a yeah, simple, I'm a simple carpenter. I can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are experts out, out there. They can do it and on the fly. They, if they see what I'm showing, they know how I do it. It's simple. It's uh, because I'm not an engineer. I'm not a mathematician. So, uh, Use your brain and you can do it. It's well, you simple. look like a mathematician because I mean, when, when I oh, see yeah. those grasshopper, yeah, yeah, yeah. those grasshopper <laughs> definitions, some so some I mean, of them are some quite math complex. Needs to be in your brain. Yeah, some are complex. Yeah. I know. With with the Vega stuff was very very. Uh, it was a lot of work to set it up, but uh, it it was actually I I built a new Tecla inside of Grasshopper. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. There is another guy. Xuan Si Huang asking if will you show us how you see and see the table chair in reality instead of showing grasshopper? You show it or well, you don't you didn't show CNC, but you show your workshop. Yeah, but actually it's it's it's, it's only 2D CNC. It's CD, it's, yeah. two, two D. And then it's all glued together, and then I got these two to send mm -hmm. it off. 
So I'm the C and C. <laughs> nice. You see, I'm the C. C. <laughs> C. Yeah. Do you have any questions, Agustina? Yeah, I actually do have one. Uh, like how? So you were self-learned. Uh, uh, how did you? What was the tools that you've used to actually learn 3D modeling? I only thing? used Rhino. Uh, I, I, and error. I never tried something else because I, I was I was uh, in the beginning. It was 1898. I, I had Rhino. I opened it and I closed it again. So every night I opened it and then I closed it again. And then one day I got a square. Oshe, ah, oh, it's a square. Well, nice. And then I got a surface and I could move. This. Oh, this is this is magic. This is oh, you can extrude it and you can. So and then it was it came along and then I. One goal I had was to make these these organic shapes. I used to do making with by hand, making these with the computer. So I learned, I learned, I learned, I learned. And then one fine day, uh, these plans came along and then all this, everything fell together like a puzzle and it, it, it all was possible. But I'm a, I'm a craftsman. I'm not a, a, I just, I just use what I got in my brains and my hands and that's it. I remember meeting you by chance in a Paris exhibition many, many years ago, where you yeah. were showing that uh, that bench. Yeah, the bench. Yeah, with that you created a system to make all the with the filament in uh, with grasshopper. Yes, by offsetting, it was amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm I'm still the only one who does it. Uh, worldwide nobody copied that so far and it was really strong the material yeah it's a uh, it, it's uh, it was six six or seven kilos three meters long and I, it could hold six people oh. so so the last one i sold last year to the prince of saudi arabia mm -hmm. yes the last uh, version of the, the bench so you have pr private uh, customers that yeah, yeah, all, all, always private customers from all over the world. So, uh, very nice. There is a hot hot topic mentioned here by a pyrotechnic, pyrotechnician. Uh, excellent work. Um, um, you were talking about NFTs in your in your bio. So, what what do you think is the future with Rhino or with the NFT world? The What's future, the future of NFTs? Uh, actually, NFTs for me, uh, uh, one year ago, a guy from Australia contacted me for NFTs and then UPG social, it's a social media for web 3.0. It's a group, uh, it's a platform. Uh, you can find it, it's uh, upg.social, blah, blah, blah. And they are trying to help people to find their way around NFTs, metaverse, whatever is coming up. So I told them I'm not into NFTs. I'm not into that shit. Sorry if I say so, but I did. Uh, and after a year, uh, one ha half a year later, he called me, but Peter, you have all these 3D files. You can NFT everything. So what? Is an NFT? That's a non-fungible token. It's it's a code. So where can I put it? Yeah, you can put it in the metaverse. Where's the metaverse? The metaverse is nowhere. There is no metaverse. There is no NFT. There is a code. So actually, it's it's a lot of hot air mm -hmm. with some salt, with some mm -hmm. pepper, with some cream, with some cherries. Uh, you can NFT anything. You can NFT this video we're making right now. We can NFT it if some some person with a lot of money would like to spend a lot of money to own this video. He can do it, but you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to. So it's possible. And in this time, I was interested and fascinated in, in how the people are thinking about uh, all these, these weird things like NFTs and, and tokens and, and, and whatever. We're going to mint this. We're going to mint this. We're going to mint, mint, mint. Okay, mint on. But nothing is happening. It's there and it's not. It's 
here and it's there and it's everywhere and it's nowhere. So there is nothing, but there is a lot. It's like tulipans. Yeah, it's 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 whatever you can imagine you can do, but but you don't have to 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 join the club. But if you don't join the club, don't come uh, whining afterwards. So you miss the boat. Mm-hmm. So I'm on the boat. <laughs> That's it. Let's see. Let's see how it, it develops. And yeah, I don't know where it's going. Well, it's nobody, nobody knows. Yeah, exactly. If, if and we would know for the metaverse, I think there are now different platforms, right? There is Omniverse, there is the one by Unreal. Omniverse is NVIDIA, right? Yeah. Unreal also builds its own. And then Meta, I think, also. Yeah, it, but it's, 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 it's a game for Meta. Yeah. It's a, for those who want to play game games, go to Meta, go to Sandbox, go to whatever. Well, Meta, I guess it will be very... They, will try to make it very social, I guess. I don't know. No, they, they, they try to make it social. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. We need to see it. There is one last comment by also by Michael Sean Stallworthy uh, that you should try the integration between Maya and Rhino. You can convert NURBS in Maya and import to Rhino as FBX, even more capabilities. Well, with this, I could answer it. Um, we are trying to make uh, sub the objects in Maya and in Rhino compatible. Yeah. But, and actually, there are some big architecture firms uh, doing that already. But, yeah, our, our sub the technology is a bit different than the one found in Maya. But so, uh, there if are. I may, uh, sub D is now compatible with Modo 16. Yes, yes. So, that's because they that's, can read through the. Uh, yeah. We can read the DM. So and no with Maya, I think I mean there is always one workaround that you can just export the like the cage of the yeah of the sub the object. But I think that uh, there is a problem with the weight of the of the edges. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that it's difficult to, to yeah. make it compatible. But, but well, say say hello to short for me. Is it Vegas? I know mm-hmm. him. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he mentioned Vegas. Wow. Yeah, well, there, when you watch the, the chat later, you will see greetings from many people that I'm sure they are your friends already. And if they are not your friends, they will be since today because they were amazed with your work. Okay. It was very nice, nice to do this. I, I, think got, I, I, got, I still got a lot of stuff uh, coming up. So uh, so uh, you can find me on Facebook and wherever. Yeah, and also on the on the YouTube description, I will add now links to their to all your your works okay and nice. of the museum and everything and i don't know if agustina was going to say something else because you you are mute you are mute no uh, no yeah. no okay oh yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i was doing sign language now so uh, again by myself yeah so anyway okay. uh thank you for for the for the nice afternoon uh many thanks show. to you Okay, I can show the egg now. Uh-huh. So this is this is all movable. It's a click system. So it's uh, three D printed steel. Mm-hmm. In the and then cl- just click or it just clicks and then I got a. It's all crossed and I got one screw. If I tighten it, it presses together. So okay. I don't know if you see it. Here. Yeah, yeah. It's very very cool. Physical NFT. This this will go as an NFT because I don't want to sell hot air with cherries on top. So Mm -hmm. I will send the egg in a box. So simple. And if you don't, you can you can buy the egg. You get the NFT for free. You can buy the NFT. You get the egg for free. (laughs) Okay, it's the same. It's it's simple. (laughs) So Peter, many many thanks. Hope to meet you soon. Yes, in I, I will, I will pop in uh, if, if, in Barcelona. If, if the people from McNeil are there, maybe I'll, I'll come over. I will have a chat with them. Yeah, we hope to at least some of us uh, be in fall in the, at the Design Modeling Symposium in Berlin and hopefully also in London. Uh, we are trying to organize something with Simply Rhino UK. Yeah, yeah. So we, I've been we, there twice, so... Uh, we will tell you for sure, and for the rest of the people, we will post this on the on the blog and on our e-news. Perfect. 
So thank you uh, so much. to the audience also many thanks. And remember that this webinar was recorded. So in case you missed uh, the beginning, you can just on this same link, watch it again. And we will tell you soon about our next webinars. Okay, perfect. Very Have nice evening. regards from Belgium. Bye-bye. Thanks, Augustina. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ciao.